Hello everyone. So good to have you back in the workshop. This is a Stanley Bailey block plane, a nine and a half or nine and three quarters, and this is a type one, meaning the very first rendition of this block plane that Stanley ever made back in the 1870s. And this is the second video that I'm doing on it. I already put up a video where we did a deep dive and took a closer look at the historical perspective of this guy. And in this video, I'm going to spend a few minutes and show you what I did to just clean it up a little bit, try to spruce it up without doing any damage to it, and sharpening the iron. And stick around to the end and I'll share with you uh, just what it's like to use this guy. I am going to go at this with a little soap and water just to get uh, the dust and dirt off of it. Okay, this is the first look I've had with it now that it's been washed and I can see it looks like there is a little bit of japanning left on the inside of the body and the obligatory bits of white paint. I did manage to loosen the screw and this one I can turn but it's very tight. I think I'm gonna get a little penetrating oil in there before I go too far and I have read that this is removable but it looks like the pin in there has been peened over so this one doesn't seem as though it's removable which leads me to think that maybe this is a ladder model or perhaps that's a user modification. Okay, I just have this setting over this edge of a piece of wood. I have the screw engaged and I'm told people have said you can usually pop this plate out by leaning on this screw. Well, a little soap and water and a little dab of oil got this much looser than it was. And once again, I'm tempted to say there may be a little bit of japanning on this piece. I'm going to put this in this tub, use this Marvel Mystery Oil, uh, let this piece soak in the oil. Spots of penetrating oil down in these areas. See if we can get this to loosen a little bit. Give that a few days, maybe weeks to soak. Seems to be wicking into this joint. Okay, I'm going to let this go for a while. My experience, the gentlest way to remove loose rust is with a brass brush in the Dremel. So this has been soaking a couple days and you can see it's overhanging here on the front edge and it's standing proud. The hammer managed to dislodge it so I think I'll be able to pop that out without a huge fuss now. And there we have it. Looks like there's a lot of schmutz in there. Just got to clean it up. Makes you wonder how many decades it's been since this piece has been removed. So a closer look at the toe piece here. There's a lot of paint on the bottom of it, which corresponds to bits of paint on the bottom of the plane itself. And on this side, there are remnants of what appears to be a red paint on these edges. And where I'm hesitant to abrade it, I don't want to remove any more metal than I have to. I'm going to try to see if I can get lucky and find uh, maybe a solvent that might dissolve uh, some of this paint without hurting the metal at all. The red might have been just rust. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to the acetone. The bottom of the plane, I'm going to clean it the same way. There's a close-up of the paint splatter and a little bit tiny specks. Well, the combination of acetone, very careful work with a dental pick under magnification, little bits of steel wool, and a little bit of elbow grease, and I managed to get most of the paint flecks off, certainly the big ones. It does appear as though there is a black paint on this uh, japanning, I'm assuming. I'd say most of it's gone. There's hardly any up here on the nose. This appears to be all just cast iron. But it's looking good, and I think in the attempt to get the paint off, I removed a lot of dirt and grime and rust uh, to boot. So these areas are particularly clean. Uh, not so much in here. Can't really reach them. I did try to 
fit this piece in and it doesn't seem to want to go without a bit of a fight so I'm going to very gently uh, lap uh, the four surfaces on the left and the right and very gently scraping some of the surface rust off and if I can catch the light right you can see a remnants of the trademark and here's a close-up of the trademark which has been cleaned up a little bit just barely legible well I've spent a few minutes experimenting with this iron trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it I would like to get it sharp so that I could show the plane working best I can tell the iron was ground to a bevel angle in excess of 30 degrees and I don't have anything set up to go higher than 30 and it seems as though the back is not overly flat I don't want to have to redefine a 25 degree bevel I'll be removing an awful lot of material uh, along the heel of this bevel as it is now and it's kind of funny it's a bevel up plane but at such a steep <laughs> bevel angle uh, you're getting a cutting angle that's uh, very close to that of a, of a bench plane. So here's an update. I have a primary bevel on the iron. I have this set up around 33, 35 degrees. I kind of had to jerry-rig my setup to get a higher angle. So I'm not exactly sure what the angle is, but it's, <laughs> it's way up there. There was a little bite taken out of the tip up here. Uh, it was like a series of pits, but it was right about right here. So once I got it all the way across, I had to go a little bit further to get that little uh, chowdering at the very tip out here. And I think I'm in pretty good shape. Now it's just a matter of polishing it up and trying to get a nice edge on it. And what the word is, I'm a little bittersweet that I had to remove so much material from such an old iron. Well, I think I have it sharp. Let's give it the paper test. Okay, I have this guy together and I have to admit it doesn't seem all that easy to adjust. I realize the lever is under here for depth adjustment and I imagine you loosen the lever cap to make a subtle adjustment on the depth. I have a fair amount of oil on the back side of the lever cap because that's flat. So I was discovering as you were moving the iron up and down the lever cap was sliding up and down with it. So it's definitely heavy now. I'll pull it back somewhere around here just using my finger as a gauge. The iron seems to sit so well within the cheeks of the plane and let's tighten that and see this is just a piece of poplar okay tighten the screw a little bit and the technique I'm using is I loosen the lever cap about so and I drag the plane along and I plunge it until I can feel the iron starting to grab the wood and with that technique well, I'm getting some very fine shavings here it seems to be a little heavy on the left hand side so I'll try to coax the iron oh my well that's not a bad cut for a 150 year old plane huh well, it's not the easiest plane to use in my collection. I wonder if part of it is the angle of attack. You can see the iron there is sitting, it looks like, I don't know, somewhere around 15, 20 degrees, but I have a very steep bevel on the iron itself, something up around 33. So this is a 45, maybe even more than that angle. And the adjustment's relatively crude, but it does plane, and probably with a little more practice and finesse, probably get it to work pretty well. Okay, I put the tail knob on and something you don't realize till you do it is it's harder to get to the depth adjustment lever with the tail knob in place and it's a different feel to the plane. You tend to grab the tail knob back here and it's almost a two-hand operation. And I spent a little more time adjusting, adjusting the iron with a couple taps of the hammer and the depth. And we're 
we're getting some pretty nice shavings. So, not too shabby for a uh, 150 year old plane, huh? I think it would behave a little better and I think if the bevel angle of the iron was something closer to 22, 25 degrees, I think it would cut a little easier. You know, this is the only block plane I have that has this uh, tail knob on it. And it crosses my mind that it really changes the, the geometry and how you use the plane. Here it is next to a standard 9.5, so it's the same size, but the tail knob makes it a lot longer. It pretty much mandates a two-hand operation. So I wonder if the 9 and 3 quarters was kind of the cheap man combination of a block plane and a small bench plane. Here it is uh, next to a number 2 and a number 3 for comparisons. Obviously the plane irons are at different angles, but uh, anyway, just a thought. If anybody has any more uh, intelligence on that, feel free to leave a comment. And based on my exhaustive 15 minutes worth of use on this 9.5 Type 1, uh, compared to a Sweetheart era 9.5 like this guy, I would grab this guy every time. It's just a heck of a lot easier to get the iron exactly where you want. However, comparing this guy to a somewhat modern number 110, like this one here, who I've used for years, I have to say this old 9.5, uh, the depth adjustment does work, and it's certainly easier than having to tap something like this with an iron. Even though on this old guy here, you have to tap to do the lateral adjust, that's not quite as big a deal. Once you get depth kind of right where you want it, you can zero in on the lateral. So this really is a nice plane to use, certainly compared to this guy here. There you have it. Isn't she a beauty? Well, that's all I got for this one. I'm not going to do a lot of work on it. I don't anticipate this is a plane I'm going to spend a lot of time using, but I'm really happy I have it to the addition. We'll put that on the shelf and just enjoy looking at it. So I hope you got something out of the video. Appreciate you coming by. Hope you enjoyed this unique project as much as I have. And as always, take care, stay safe, and we will check you out on the next one.